What is going on my fellow makers, Matt from Keep Making, and today is the day I share with you how I paint miniatures. A lot better miniature painters than me out there, but a couple of my friends have been asking me, now that they're interested in the hobby, um, how I go about doing this, and I thought it was a great opportunity for me to finally make this video. So here is my uh, stress-free, <laughs> definitive guide to miniature painting. A uh, bit of a longer video here, so sit back and enjoy. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're always going to do is clean up the model. So, you see the seam line here that happens when the model is getting made, the two pieces go together, and some of that plastic can squeak through. Also, these injection spots, so uh, where the plastic's being funneled into the cavity that makes the model, um, those can sort of be left over after the model's made. So, uh, we're just going to clean those up with this exact knife here, and then I'm also using some needle files and some sanding sticks. So once our model's been sanded or cleaned up, we're going to take it and use some hot water and soap and sort of get any of the oils or uh, mold release agents that might still be on the model. That'll stop the primer from adhering. I'm also rebasing this model. I like to magnetize the bottom of most of my models for storage purposes uh, and it helps me paint when I'm doing the priming. But before that, I'm going to base this model. So I'm taking some uh, tile grout and some sand, mix in with like some larger sort of rocks. Um, that will give us a good uh, ground texture and I'm just applying that onto the base with some super glue. This is cheap super glue from the dollar store, you don't need to use expensive stuff for this type of thing. Uh, sprinkling that on with a spoon and then I'm going to brush off all the excess so that when I go outside to spray paint it, it's not going to uh, fling back up onto my model. Now before we prime, the last thing to do is uh, stick this guy to the base obviously so for that I'm going to be using super glue um, but what you want to do first is make sure that there's something um, for that glue to grip into so since I cut this off the last base this is a pretty smooth surface and so all I'm going to do is just take my knife here and just score the back of this foot um, that way uh, the glue will grab into the model um, and because this is like a fine texture uh, there's going to be a lot of it to grab. If you apply two like flat surfaces to each other, it's easier for those surfaces to come apart. Because uh, science, I don't know. Take this outside and we'll get it primed. First, I am going to put a magnet on the bottom. I put magnets on all my minis uh, for storage and it makes it easier to prime with the sort of stand I'm using. So let's get to it. Okay, to prime, I'm using Army Painter Primer. Um, I don't know what the actual difference is between a primer like this and like a regular Rust-Oleum primer you might find at like a hardware store. All I do know is this dries a lot quicker. Uh, your miniature paints will bond a lot better to this one for whatever reason. I don't know, I couldn't tell you, but uh, this is mine of choice. So we'll give it a good shake and then we'll take it to the garage and get the priming. Alternatively, if you don't have a spray primer, this is a uh, brush on primer or airbrush primer. Uh, you can use this through an airbrush or you could brush it on. Okay, so we got our primed mini here, but uh, before we begin painting, I just want to share with you the setup a little bit, um, you know, that I use uh, and some recommendations for when you begin. So I'm using uh, specific miniature paints. These are mostly Vallejo paints. There's a few Citadel Game Workshop paints sort of mixed in, uh, but I mostly use Vallejo. Uh, this is the airbrush paints and some medium stuffs. Probably won't be getting into most of those today. Uh, as far as I can tell, but we'll see. And over here, I have all my metallic colors, as well as the washes and the pigment powders. Not sure if we're gonna be using those today, but washes we'll definitely be using, and probably, uh, depending on the model, uh, using some metallic colors. So, to separate, I have a wet palette and a dry palette, I guess. Uh, then I have this to rinse the colors from the wet palette, and this is for metallic paints only. So if I use a brush with a metallic paint, uh, I'm gonna be rinsing that brush in this water because if I use the same water for both, I'm gonna get all those sort of glittery mica flakes 
into the brush that I'm using and into this water. And anytime I go to thin my paint or rinse my brush from this cup, it's gonna have that same quality in these paints, which we don't want. So um, the wet palette, this is just a sandwich container with a sponge and then some parchment paper over top. I don't know if you can see that here, parchment paper. Um, and so we wanna soak that sponge and put the parchment paper over top. Uh, so when we put our paint on this parchment paper, they'll stay moist the entire time, uh, which is good. We don't want our paints to dry out. It'll change the texture, the consistency of the paint, uh, and you'll waste money because half of your paint will be dry before you've begun painting. So I only use um, a dry palette for metallic paints, um, and then obviously it has its separate brush here. So um, if you don't have this specific sponge, I'm sure any sort of uh, sponge to the same sort of consistency would work. Um, also, you can just use paper towel underneath uh, soak the paper towel, put a parchment paper over top. Make sure you're not using wax paper. Wax paper will do the opposite of what we want here. We want water to be able to absorb through this parchment paper and into our paint. Wax paper will stop that process. So don't use wax paper, make sure it's parchment paper. And then I always have a paper towel here to uh, either get a point to my brush. I'll sort of just roll the brush here. You'll see me doing that later on or uh, get paint off, uh, additional paint off that we don't need. Or uh, if we're dry brushing at all, we can use this same paper towel to uh, get most of the paint off our brush before we dry brush. So we'll begin painting now, but this is sort of the setup uh, you'll wanna have uh, before you get into it. So wet palette, not necessary, but it'll make your life easier and you can make one for like $5. So uh, definitely, um, you know, recommend doing that and then always have a separate uh, paint, sorry, water container for your metallic paints. So let's get to it. Okay, one more thing before we start painting, I know. Uh, we want something to hold our mini. If you're holding your mini with your hands, um, if you're rotating to sort of get those hard to reach areas, you're gonna be rubbing your hand against the mini, uh, potentially rubbing off paint and we don't want that. Also, if you drop this, it's game over, depending on the material, but probably game over. Uh, you don't wanna do that. Um, so, if you're trying to stay on the cheap side, I recommend something like this. This is just a piece of wood with a wad of sticky tack on it. I stick my model in there, and we're good to go. Uh, I can rotate this. You just want to be careful. Make sure you're using good sticky tack, as well as the sticky tack hasn't seen its best days <laughs> and uh, your model fall off uh, unexpectedly. Um, something else you could try if you're like me and you're magnetizing your bases. Uh, this guy's magnetized. I just stick a thin piece of sheet metal on the top of this uh, pill bottle and then boom, this guy's not going anywhere. Um, so that's another good way as well. And then we get into hobby specific tools that were built for this exact purpose. So this is from Game Workshop. Uh, this sort of expands to fit whatever type of base you have in there. And if that's not big enough, they also come in the bigger variety. Say you're painting busts or like bigger models. Uh, these are awesome. If I'm painting a single model, I'll use these uh just because they're the, like the most intricate and most comfortable i'd say uh but if you're using a wood one obviously you can uh refine it to fit your hand as best possible um so these are the ones but if i'm batch painting or speed painting or something like that i'll probably use this guy just so i can change models quickly um then if you're painting something bigger i wouldn't recommend this for mini but uh something like a bust or like a statuette or whatever um this is just a cut off from a hole saw uh, you could also stick a lot of sticky tack on something like this that's a really good grip um but i just drill a hole in it uh and then the screw goes in there that'll sit flat if i needed to and then drill it into the bottom of like a wooden base thing uh, that your model stands on so uh, those are some options you have uh you don't want to be holding your model with your hands now let's get to it so now finally we'll begin painting um, and how we do that is we're going to start with what's called a base coat. So if we're doing a cape, maybe uh, to show the recesses in the cape, the shadows, we're going to want those, uh, those lower areas like here uh, to be like a black. Um, or maybe we want it to just be a really, really dark blue and later on we'll come in with a wash. So there are a lot of options. Uh, I'm going to show you how I go about this. There's no right or wrong way. Um, whatever is easiest for you. A lot of people will just go with the color that they want the thing to be. So if you wanted this to be blue, you'd paint it blue. And if you wanted the recesses to be darker to show that shadow 
and uh, the recessed areas, you just put the black wash in there. Uh, that's an option too. Uh, I will be doing some of that as well. But uh, for now, I'm going to be going over all the areas, getting paint on the whole model, uh, and then we'll be coming into highlight later. Okay, so to start off, uh, as I was saying before, you want this to be the darkest areas if you're planning on highlighting up uh, and making your transitions that way. So you can see me here, I'm mixing blue and black because I want this cape to be blue. Uh, and so I'm starting with a darker blue uh, and this will be the color that stays in those recesses. But everywhere else on the model, I'm going to start to build up that blue, uh, building up opacity. So. Uh, for the other areas, I'm doing the exact same sort of thing. Uh, starting off with darker variations of the colors, you can see here this is like a dark reddish brown. Uh, that eventually goes up into like a red leather sort of color. Now to be very clear, you do not need to be precious about this point. Uh, obviously you want to avoid getting paint where it's not supposed to be, but if it gets into areas, you're going to be painting those areas later. So don't worry about paint spilling over onto uh, different areas or anything like that. Uh, just do your best to get paint on the model, start moving paint around, familiarize yourself with the model, uh, and sort of let it speak to you on uh, what areas should be what. Uh, this is just a feeling out stage. Okay, so once the base coating's done, here's how we're looking. Um, you know, uh, your model should look something like this. You're probably even going to be cleaner than this. You can see a lot of my paint has gone onto uh, the wrong surfaces, uh, but I'm not really worried about that. Um, there's paint on the model now, and so that gives us a starting point to start doing some more highlights. All the sort of intricate and um, the, uh, the more careful we'll have to be moving forward but for now we have paint on the model we have a good starting place and we're going to be able to refine these areas as we progress so the first one i'm going to work on uh to really show how to highlight a surface so we'll start with this dark blue here uh, so what i'm going to be using is just the standard blue uh, this is actually the blue i used to make this dark blue i mixed it with black uh, and that's how we got the color that's currently on there so i'm going to go one step up I'm going to come in with this blue, uh, we're going to water it down pretty extensively and then sort of just glaze it on. And so we'll build up layers of uh, this blue highlight just over and over and over uh, until it creates like a natural transition. And then once we're done with this, maybe we'll go to a lighter blue paint or we'll just add some white to this blue paint and do the same thing on an even smaller area of this cape. So we're going to get most of the places here. Uh, without the recesses and then from there we're going to come in and do only the highest points and that'll give us like a natural shading so let's get to that now So the main thing to keep in mind here is that we're hitting less area than we did on the base coat. We're highlighting, so we're leaving those recessed areas the same dark shade they already are, and then those areas that would sort of stick out, uh, so like the folds in the cape, uh, we're going to be coming in with the lighter color there. And then when we go to our next layer of highlights, we're hitting an even smaller area, and then an even smaller area, and that'll give us the highlight we're looking for. The reason why we do this sort of type of highlighting is because these models are so small that even if you have lighting on them, uh, you lose sort of the realistic look that you would get from something actually, like a cape like this actually being in a physical space. Uh, so we have to simulate that lighting ourselves by doing things like applying darker colors in recessed areas, um, just so those things appear the way we'd want them to look if they were.
this is how we're looking after that highlight so um if you get to this point uh and your colors are sort of not uh blending well together um here's where a wash might save you into sort of uh toning all those things into like say i wanted to throw a blue wash on here that might help but i'm actually liking where this is going um and so the next step i'm going to work on just to uh, show more of this highlighting is going to be this shoulder piece right here so uh, that's probably the last one i'll show in depth and then we'll sort of uh, time lapse snap it into existence um and then we'll see where we're at then so yeah uh sorry these shots some of them are, are out of focus i i just got too into it too check the monitor at some points but uh, luckily here you can see what I'm doing pretty clearly uh, again keeping that paint very thin uh, coming in over that base coated area and just getting a little bit less uh, this time so you can see between the two shoulder pads there I'm leaving that area dark uh, and that creates the contrast and separation we're looking for as well as the lighting effect to really make those shoulder pads pop lighter brown hitting less area uh, and only on the sort of higher parts of this model and then finally we'll be coming in and doing something called an edge highlight. And you can see the very uh, highest points the folds in this uh, skirt um, they're almost like white uh, so what I did there was I mixed like a cork brown with the, the very lightest blue I used uh, and that's how I got that color but for this brown shoulder pad I'm just going to be using that straight cork brown so it's a very tan uh, very light brown uh, and I'm not using the tip of my brush here if you use the tip you might get more volume than you want and so I'm just using the very edge of my brush keeping that point very fine uh, and using the edge of my brush to sort of get the edge of this uh, pauldron here so you can see me do that here um, that just allows us to be a little bit more precise. Uh, you might have to go over it a few times, um, but it's definitely not a hard technique to learn. Uh, don't feel intimidated by it. Just use the edge of your brush to get that very thin highlight. Okay, so now that I've shown you how I build up the colors, I'm gonna hit the rest of the model with the same technique. Okay, so you see me do some layering. Uh, that's how I usually build up my contrast and my lighting. Uh, but I'm gonna show you another technique, uh, and this is a product. So these are called washes, uh, often referred to as talent in a bottle. Um, this sort of does the same thing. If we painted all of our areas in one color and then hit it with this, you might get a similar result. Uh, so you can see here, I'm going over the fur, which I painted with just a straight up cork brown. I'm just hitting it with a wash, and you'll see how the wash seeps into the recesses and immediately gives us some contrast. So another easy to use uh, technique at your disposal, uh, great for bringing out contrast as well as some weathering. And I'm also going to apply this into this uh, red leather here. Uh, just to bring out a little bit more definition there. So yeah, look at that. That's great. Um, two people who stream while painting because painting while narrating is difficult. So 
if you're just starting um, out painting, I would definitely recommend getting a brown wash, uh, whether you go Citadel or any of the other brands, Army Painter or Vallejo, and definitely get a black wash. If nothing else, those are the two that'll uh, put in the most work for you. So I continue to work on the areas that need washers as well as sort of highlight the rest of the model the way I was doing before. Uh, and that brings us to our next point here and the next technique I want to share with you, which is dry brushing. So dry brushing, I'm taking paint, I'm putting it on my brush, then I'm taking my paper towel, I'm wiping most of that paint off, and then I'm just going across the surfaces that I want this new color on uh, with a flat brush. Usually you want to use a flat brush. So. Um, for this, I don't like to put the paint in the uh, wet palette. Obviously, we're dry brushing, so uh, if the paint is saturated, uh, you're going to have a more difficult time controlling where it goes. So, wiping most of that paint off, you want to do this so that it almost seems like no paint is coming off of the brush. Dry brush, just hitting the edges. And voila. So a couple things to look out for is flat surfaces when you're dry brushing. Uh, you can get sort of like a chalky finish uh, and brush texture actually onto the model, which we do want to avoid. Uh, so things to look in a good way are um, furs, feathers, dragon scales, chain mail, all that sort of textures with raised areas are the best places to dry brush. Uh, and you'll sort of like um, come to understand which areas uh, benefit the most from dry brushing. Uh, dry brushing can also be used if you're trying to weather like a metal object. Uh, you paint it the color it was painted and then dry brush in with the metallic later on. It gives a really great chipping effect. Okay, so here's how we're looking so far, looking all right. Um, just wanted to mention some things about metallic paint. So the main thing for using these true metallic paints is you'll want to start with some sort of base coat. So if you're doing anything silver, I like to use a black as a base coat. If you're doing anything gold, I go brown. And anything um, sort of copper or uh, more like red metals, uh, you'll want to do like a dark reddish brown. Uh, that's what we'll be doing here. And so I'll show you what that looks like in super speed time. Okay, finally we're gonna end with the hair and the skin tone. So, I am going to paint this guy with a darker complexion. Uh, and so I'm gonna be starting with a... Hmm, with a Doom Bowl Brown. So we're gonna base coat and highlight like we did the other areas, but for the highlights on the skin tone, we're really gonna to go nuts. Skin tone is never just one flat color. There's always variation in complexions and highlights. And so we're gonna go a wide range from our base coat to our highest highlight. Um, so basically we know we want this to be our highest highlight. Uh, we don't want the skin to look like it's this color, but the very tips of the flesh we want to be in this color. Um, we started off with this Doom Bowl Brown over here, uh, and this is where we're going to. So we need quite a few steps in between those two. So we'll bridge the gap um, by mixing this Dark Flesh from Vallejo with Arcadian Flesh Tone from uh, Citadel. So, so we have our Doom Bowl already on there. We're going to be dropping this Vallejo.
Now we can put these paints away. We don't need them anymore. Bear with me. And you can. So I get those four colors on my palette and then I'm building up a natural progression with them. So going from our darkest to our lightest, we're creating additional colors as we do this. And so from those four paints, we get about like five or six, maybe even seven different colors. Remember, we're hitting even smaller areas every time we change colors. Uh, so you'll want to use a smaller brush for this if you have one available to you or making sure the tip of your brush is as fine as it can be so you're able to be more um, accurate when you're hitting those areas. Uh, places like the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose, tip of the ears, chin, jawline, um, you know, cheekbones, stuff like that, forehead. I don't know if I've said them all. Uh, those areas are the ones we're going to be sticking to, but we're making sure our paint is super thin so that that Doom Bowl, the color that we started with, the base coat, is shining through and being the prevailing color here. Um, and yeah, that's how I go about doing my skin tone. <laughs> Right, the eyes. So for the eyes, we're gonna be taking an off-white color and painting the eyeball. Now, if you spill a little bit of this paint onto the skin tone, don't worry, you can always go in with the base coat. Again, you wanna keep that area around the eyes, the base coat color, like your darkest color, or at least one of the colors closest to that dark color uh, to give some definition to the eyes, but as well, our eyes are sort of in our heads, right? So there would be a little bit of uh, shadow there. Uh, so go in, try to get the shape as best as you can, and then we'll be coming in with the pupil later on. Tough thing about painting eyes for me is consistency. Because you'll put white in one socket and go, hey, that looks great. And then you'll put one in the other socket and go, that also looks great. And then when you look at it like so, you go, those are completely different shapes. And I don't know which one I like better. Um, or which one's correct so uh then we'll move on to painting the iris so um, to do that, we're using whatever color you want the eyes to be. I'm using a purple because it's an elf and why not? Uh, we're painting it. Make sure you're checking it from different angles to make sure it doesn't look wonky. Then we're putting a small dot of black paint as the pupil in the middle of that uh, color you just painted. And then finally, we're going to be using a pure white and our smallest, sharpest brush to do um, the final sort of dot on the eye. Um, and this is important because this really <laughs> sells the effect that this is a living person. I know if you want to skip this, this part can seem a little bit daunting. Um, I definitely skipped this early on, but now I try to at least go for it. Uh, make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush though, because if you smear a bunch of paint, you're going to have to start all over again on the eyes. And then finally, I'm doing all the cleanup on the model as well as painting the hair. I do that the same way I did everything else, just base coat and then highlight. Uh, and then I'm cleaning up any areas that are left over, uh, if there was any mistakes made, uh, just doing the final sort of pass on them. Oh, and one more thing, I use a wash here as well uh, to bring out some of the detail on the skin tone. Uh, so this is just a flesh wash, it's like a reddish brown wash, the same uh, type of thing as we used on the fur. So our model is done, but he's standing on just a uh, gray base and that's not good enough so I'm just gonna be going over that base with this brown here uh, I'm gonna be dry brushing to bring out the detail of all that uh, texture we added to it and then applying a wash to it to give it some definition Depending on what sort of ground texture you're going for, this might be a good place to stop. However, if you're trying to do something with a little bit of foliage, here's how you can do that. So uh, if you're on a budget, 
Uh, this is from the dollar store. This is reindeer moss. You could also get it at like a craft store. Great for simulating like vines and grasses, bushes even. This is foam flock from Woodland Scenics. I use this most often. Uh, here's just a blend of it, uh, a bunch of different colors. It comes in a lot of variations and sizes. And here are grass tufts. So these are static grass tufts. Um, they come in a bunch of different variations as well as like flowers, uh, larger grasses, dandelions, stuff like that. So to get all this stuff onto the base, I'm going to be using PVA glue. That's your normal school glue, white glue, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just apply this with a silicone brush. You could also do this with like an older worn out brush. Um, and then I'm just sprinkling everything on, except for the static grass. I'm actually using tweezers to put that exactly where I want it. But everything else just gets sprinkled on and then again using a worn out brush to get it into place. So once that's all applied, we just have to let it dry, but then we're also painting the perimeter of the base. Don't skip this step. This really completes your miniature. And then when it's all done, here is how it turned out. Well, there you have it, guys. That is the Cube Making's definitive guide to miniature painting. Again, I made this video for a few friends of mine. Uh, but also, it's good to have up on the channel just to see how I approach these things. If you're new to the channel or just discovering the channel, um, you know, I, I think it's cool that uh, you'll be able to see how I approach this sort of thing, uh, in which I apply to all the other things I do, really. So, um, yeah, thanks for indulging me, I guess. If you liked the video, make sure you're hitting the thumbs up button. If you loved it, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell so you're notified when my videos do release. As always, guys, keep making them.